Jeffrey Howell's Carpet Cleaning. We are at the Oregon coast with some cleaning to do. Let's do a quick walk through what we're going to be cleaning up. Um, I'm just going to go through here. I'm going to give everything a quick vacuum because when you're dealing with um, vacation rentals and things at the coast, you're dealing with a lot of sand and stuff. However, this particular unit is not up on next to the beach or anything. It's kind of up on some rock. So we don't deal with sand and like issues with um, being right on the beach. All right, so right here is probably the worst of it. I have used the uh, water claw over and over on this particular area and it looks good and then it, and give it a little bit of time, it always comes back. So there's obvious some residue or something that's in there that just keeps reattracting everything. But uh, the rest of the place isn't too shabby. I mean, the other place is right along here um, this being the counter, a lot of times food gets served up along the counter there and people are dribbling and dropping stuff all over. And then in here next to the couches, you know, you can see some possible coffee splatters down there. But other than that, everything looks pretty good. So what we are going to do is we're going to do our premium carpet care. We're going to use our three-phase cleaning system. One is to go through with a good vacuum. And then phase two is to lay down the pre-spray. And then part B of phase two is to go through and agitate it mechanically with a CRB. Then phase three is to hook up the lines and things to our truck, run them in, and give it a quick steam out. I call it quick, but it's never quick. All right, so I was uh, looking through the chemistry on water truck to figure out what we're going to use today. And, you know, I was looking at some different back weight products because that's basically what I carry on board the truck. And I had a little bit of grease hog left, so I was like, okay, Eureka, the like, grease hog will work great. I mean, this is like restaurant grade cleaner. Um, we'll work great at cleaning this stuff up here. And then the sodium carbonate. And peroxide actually I added peroxide full strength peroxide to um, almost full strength maybe 80% strength grease hog and that way it'll clean everything up so in the bedrooms and everything we're going to be using the uh, sodium carbonate and peroxide products here now this stuff on left to itself is not that great of a product, but when you boost it with the uh, the peroxide, it seems to do a pretty good job. And I've been using it because it's soap free and it's very green and just provides that extra alternative and it works. Um, again, there are times like what we're doing here with the grease hog, you know, I really would like to use the grease hog in this scenario because um, I stress test that stuff, and it, it with the peroxide, it seems to do a pretty good job, but when you're dealing with greasy food and stuff, um, it does not work the greatest. But as far as getting out urine smell, and with the peroxide actually getting the urine out, it does a really good job. So in those scenarios, it works great. So we're probably going to sodium carbonate everything except for the main drag here and the dining room. And then, of course, I'll take that, uh, this two-gallon jug as far as it'll possibly go. And this is almost empty, so I'm kind of wanting just to use it up and get rid of it anyways. So I got a couple fresh gallons I'll probably start with here just so that we have a full gallon on the truck, fresh and ready to go, rather than just, you know, using up the remnants of what we have left, because I don't know if there's enough actually in there to make another batch or not but anyways what i'm going to get ahead and do i just plopped a new curry bag in here and we'll see how many nasties we can actually get out of the carpet today so we're going to begin phase one of our cleaning right now Alright, so this part almost always amazes me. Well, not totally, but kind of. Um, we clean this place down here once a year, twice a year, or something like that. Um, and then after every single tenant that stays here, the covers get cleaned and everything. And I know there's not a whole lot in this bag, but the, the 
10% of a bag that we did fill up. I mean, that's completely sand and gravel there. So that it kind of goes to show you that vacuum cleaners don't all work the same. Um, you know, especially often as this place gets vacuumed, there shouldn't be that much sand in the carpeting. And, you know, it, it's all debris that was completely hidden and invisible and you couldn't see or tell or anything like that. But um, I'm glad I got that out of there because that just helps to prolong the carpet fibers. And when you're doing a premium carpet cleaning job, I mean, that's really one of the, the key benefits of the premium cleaning deluxe cleaning is that it is prolonging the carpet fibers. It's not just making them look clean, it's also getting that debris that's buried deep down on the carpeting out of there. Which, if you're just going by a steam cleaning, they're probably going to be leaving, you know, a good 50 to 60 percent of that debris in the carpet. And that goes back to uh, whether or not they're doing dry passes or not. Um, I kind of touched up on that earlier when uh, I, I see guys that have these, you know, strong, powerful trucks or whatever, and they say that uh, they just go over them once and they say that they're good because they dry in about, you know, 45 minutes to an hour anyways, which might be true, but you also have to keep in mind that when that suction is down on the floor, it's picking stuff up and off the floor. I mean, that's basically what a vacuum does, is that it sucks stuff up off the floor. So, sure, you might throw some liquid down and suck the liquid back up, but are you actually getting all the debris and everything up that's laying down there? Because that's really what you're wanting to go after, is that debris that's in the carpet, along with cleaning them and making them look nice. So, um, there's two factors involved. Okay, so this here will be uh, phase two, part A. So what we do is we take our cleaning solution, which is a mix of sodium carbonate, which is more or less a uh, cleaning grade baking soda, along with some uh, hydrogen peroxide. Makes it a, a pretty good duo. And we go ahead and we uh, use this, this sprayer here, and we apply it to the floors. And then once that process is done, we'll, we'll go ahead and agitate, and then I will show you how we will be agitating here in just a moment. All of the floors in here have received a generous application of our pre-spray solution. And what that pre-spray does is that it costs soil. It basically breaks the bonds between the residue and the soils and things that are attached to the carpet fibers like Velcro. So that stuff goes on there and it kind of starts dissolving and, and breaking that up so that when we do our steam cleaning it basically washes it right off the carpet much like the same way when you are scrubbing dishes in the sink you know you scrub it with an SOS pad a little bit of Dawn soap in this case we're using a, a pre-spray solution with the sodium carbonate and stuff and it breaks those bonds that are holding that caked on food onto those plates pots and pans and then you just rinse it off with water and it comes right off so basically the same analogy applies to the carpet cleaning however what we're doing here instead of using an SOS pad on the carpets um, technically I suppose you could get on your hands and knees and scrub all the carpets but here we are using mechanical agitation with a machine known as a uh, counter rotating brush machine or a CRB for short so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to, this right here is a uh, collection reservoir that's on there. So along with agitating the carpets and getting the uh, cleaning solution throughout all the fibers, it's also uplifting and pulling out matted hair at the same time. Hair and lint, that stuff just collects on carpets over time. Um, if it's lint and, and even hair, in most cases it's completely invisible and you don't even know it's there. However, if there's too much hair... Uh, that protein begins to to get rancid in those oils and everything and it begins to stink so that's where you've got issues with pet odors and things like that so when you're cleaning and there's a lot of hair out in the carpet it would behoove you to uh, invest in the step up to get this on um, the carpets thoroughly uh, uh, groomed for animal hair just to prevent any um, foul odors or offensive odors and generally that's what is uh, also causing allergen allergy problems is the uh, 
the proteins and stuff follicles that are attached to the hair and so this is what it is it's just two counter rotating brushes notice that it's not spinning on the floor like those those floor scrubbers and stuff on on the carpet so um this is actually a lot less harsh on the carpets it's not ripping and pulling it's just gently um lifting up and then you can see how it is able to those fingers of the nylon brushes are able to reach into the carpet fibers like a fine tooth comb and just brush those uh that matted hair right on out so we're going to go ahead and take this bad boy set it back up um basically the way that this thing operates there's a little button here. Well, in this case, it's a lock that holds the handlebar. When the handlebar comes down, it engages the machine, and you're just taking it and gently going back and forth, just grooming all the carpets with our uh, solution that we've already put down in the carpet. So this is uh, part B of phase two of our soil suspension process. And then once this is done, we can begin running our lines and hoses and getting that stuff set up for the final extraction. So here you have it. This is a completely CRB'd out room. We went ahead and we pre-sprayed part A, part B. It was the mechanical agitation with our CRB machine. And as you can see, the carpets look absolutely wonderful. Um, now, if you're one of those guys who thinks you're going to be cleaning 6 to 10, you know, units or 6 to 10, you know, carpet cleaning jobs a day or whatever, the CRB may not be for you because the CRB does take time and it is another piece of equipment you got to lug into the house of where you're working and plug it in and set it up and, and do all that. So if you're on a time constraint where you're just trying to bang out as many units as you can, um, CRB is definitely probably not going to be your uh, forte. Um, you're probably going to want to just use it for restoration purposes or where you're needing extra agitation. Um, part of my premium carpet care package is to do uh, mechanical agitation. So um, I do not do, I'm probably doing like two to three jobs a day max. And that's just because they're a lot more higher end jobs. And that piece of equipment allows me to do the kind of work that I want to be doing. Um, one of the benefits that you do get from doing the mechanical agitation is that, um, going back to the analogy with the, the dishes in the sink, when you're doing the uh, mechanical agitation and the, the scrub with the uh, cleaning solution and the carpet, it helps to um, super accelerate the soil suspension process, allowing you to actually rinse with less water. So instead of blasting the carpets with 600 plus PSI of water, you can drop that back to like 250 or 200 pounds of pressure and you're getting just as good as a clean, if not better, because you're also, you're grooming all the lint and stuff off the carpet, which, you know, if a vacuum cleaner can't get the lint up, if uh, you're still pulling hair out with the CRB, you know, what what chance does your wand have at getting that lint and stuff up? I mean, you're just getting the stuff wet. Sure, your your suction is, really, is going to be a lot more thorough than the vacuum, but um, I don't see, you know, there's, putting all your eggs into one basket and just relying on the suction of your truck is not, uh, and especially as fast as people go, it really doesn't matter how strong your 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 vacuum is on your blower and your truck. It's just um, it's surface deep. <laughs> Let's put it that way, surface deep. So, anyways, with this done here, I'm gonna go ahead and bang out the rest of this unit, and then we will um, fire up our truck, run the lines in, and get ready for phase three, which is our steam cleaning process. And because we are agitating with our CRB, we are going to be dropping down um, our water usage on the truck, the PSI down to about 250, and that way we're using less water, carpets dry faster, and we are actually able to uh, hold more um, of our um, recovered water in our waste tank. We're able to, to uh, do a lot more work 
more jobs, more rooms, and all that without having to continuously dump out our, our, our tanks because we're using uh, less water. And the carpets come out just as beautiful and um, I'd say even better so, a lot better so, because we are combining it with a lot of dry soil extraction as well as the hot water extraction. So, um, a double whammy, a one-two punch, BAM! We're getting it done. All right, I kind of wish I would have done a before because there were black marks all over this. And one thing about the sodium carbonate that I like is that it is wool safe, you know, being uh, soap free and all that good stuff. So a little bit of peroxide in there and we will rinse it out. But the little bit that's in there I don't think would hurt it at all. This is a uh, kind of a tight knit, you know, um, wool. It smells as soon as it goes on there, but... Um, you know, with the quick scrub with the CRB, it looks really good. So, um, here we did is we went over this area here, got all the food splatters and things up that are here. Now, there might be some discoloration due to sun along the doorway here. On um, this carpet is, I don't know, 15, 16 years old. So, you know, it's really in endured and and lasted longevity a long time it looks really nice um no real traffic areas along the couches or anything um of course you know these couches have been replaced a couple times over the years and the carpets still look great in here in my opinion um you went ahead and there were some coffee splatters and stuff in here sodium carbonate and peroxide pretty much get rid of all that so um, that's one thing I really like about this product is because it is so versatile it, it it will clean up almost anything if you have good agitation it'll it'll clean it right up and so this area is prepped and ready to go and we'll just keep working again I think I'm gonna try to see how much further this stuff will go I don't know if it'll finish this hallway area here but once we get up to here we are going to switch to uh, a grease hog and peroxide just because of the nasty stuff that's in here so just taking it one step at a time okay looking back over here obviously we had enough of the sodium carbonate peroxide to finish this area off it looks really good and then we went ahead and switched out solutions and put in our grease hog and peroxide and it did a pretty pretty good job I'm just gonna let this sit and dwell in there um, I have a feeling there's some pretty nasty residue because I do see quite a few dark spots in there and I did um, go over them really good with the uh, CRB I think maybe I'll go over it because a lot of times if you go over it in one direction you know back and forth turn it and go back over it in a per perpendicular direction back and forth and even going back and forth like in a circle really gives it a real good scrub and can help to uh, annihilate some of the residue and stuff that's in there because it's just stuck to the fibers is what it is um, so anyways I'm going to uh, run out the rest of our uh, grease hog solution in the hallway here um, that's kind of my justification for using it is that this is where the main entryway is and if any petroleum stuff is going to come in off the parking lot, grease, or whatever, it's going to be here in the main walkway. So we'll go ahead and burn out the rest of it, and then we'll make up some more sodium carbonate when we need to to finish off the bedrooms. Okay, so uh, phase two is complete with the soil suspension agitation. I think things turned out pretty well. Um, went through here. There are a couple spots in the doorway came right out and everything else looks really great so um if you're interested let's take a look at this kind of hit this up again and that actually looks a lot better i think just having it have a little bit of dwell time in there is the trick to just having that uh if you think about it citrus does just continue eating away at the grease while you know, it kind of melts it away so it can be extracted. Now, um, if you're interested in the type of debris that the C or B is able to lift out of the carpet fibers, just look at all that. Um, that's carpet lint, hair, all kinds of nasties and stuff that's in there. Um, you can see that 
it picks up a lot of just nasty stuff, so. Um, it will pick up a bunch of sand and gravel and grit and abrasive debris just with the pre-vacuum and then we're able to pull all this stuff off of the carpets. And you have to keep in mind that the carpets get vacuumed all the time, so there is uh, a certain amount of debris that the vacuum just isn't able, capable of picking up and removing, and that is an example of some right there. So what we're going to do, I'm going to take um, some of this equipment, like our CRB, probably the pump and extension cord and stuff, and move it into the next unit that we're going to be cleaning just to have it staged and out of the way and ready to go for the next cleaning. And then we will have a thorough walk space here just to run our lines and everything without anything getting in the way. So that's a premium carpet cleaning right there. Now, um, a lot most carpet cleaners start at phase three. They just run their lines in, and well, they do a little bit of soil suspension. But let's say uh, part A of phase two, and then they move on to phase three, and they completely skip phase one and, and part B of phase two. So um, they're doing 50% less work and getting the carpets 50% less clean. Okay, when I run the line in, I've got my hoses in like 25 foot sections on the reel out there. So what I do is I always keep an inside only hose line, which is this here. Actually, I think this is 50 feet. So anyways, this is goes inside only. So this does not go outside. Like, so when it's raining or something like that, it doesn't get mud and stuff on it, and then you're dragging it through the next customer's home. So, this will go to the door, and then the next uh, unit line that we got will go from the truck and couple in here. And then, uh, this is actually a solution line, is all purpose, it goes everywhere. But generally, it needs, uh, so the, this section, uh, I think it's 75 to 100 feet long. It pretty much goes everywhere. Everything that we're cleaning, every now and then we have to hook on another 25 footer or something. And that's what we did in this case, is that this went almost all the way to the truck. It needed another five feet, but we don't have another five feet. So we just use a, a 20 footer that we had. So it works out perfectly well that way. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab this end here and just walk it right out to the, to the front door there. And that is the purpose for doing this, is just so that we have an indoor line, keep all the, the dirt and debris and everything outside and not bring it into the house. Alright, so the, uh, what we do is we fire up our truck, we block the blower just to put a load on the machine, and that usually helps. But to uh, increase the temperature of the water and get it moving a little bit faster, especially on a cold start. Um, right now, by the time you run the lines and stuff in, usually you can just go ahead and plug your hose and you're ready to go. Um, generally, when I do that, the water is all the way up to like 2.30 or so, you know, just running the lines in. In this case, we're all on one level. It's just a simple plug and go. So the water was only up to about 180 by the time we got it in here. It took us about three, three to five minutes to set this up. So uh, we are ready to go and give this thing uh, an extraction steam out. That view is worth a million bucks, man. I love it. The carpeting here looks absolutely awesome. It's turning out real good. Now the spot where all the grease and all that mass was, it still looks a little grimy. I have a feeling that this carpet is just completely hammered here. And it's been cleaned so many times. And like I said, it's probably about 15 years old, so. I mean, for a 15 year old carpet, for as much as this gets hammered, it still looks pretty good. So, I'm going to go ahead and bring it out down here, hit the bedrooms, and move on to the next one. So, the next unit, yeah, will be up, up 
two levels, so it'll be on the third floor. And there's a million dollar view at the Pacific Ocean, man. I love cleaning down here because I that view is just absolutely amazing. And the carpets always turn out very well too. Now, um, this area that was completely hammered with food grease and stuff, um, it still looks a little, it looks a lot better. You don't have the spots everywhere, but you can tell that the carpets are pretty well beat here. Um, 15 years of just being abused and, and dumping food and grease on there and them just being cleaned over and over again. So the fibers are probably starting to get a little weak just from um, all the cleaning and everything that goes on here just to keep it looking nice. But with that said, it looks very good. Okay, I've come back, um, let it dry for a few hours, and came back. Carpets are dry, and I restaged everything and raked out foot patterns and shirt teeth and all that sort of stuff. And it, once everything is staged back up and raked out, it really brings balance back to the room, and it looks absolutely wonderful. Um, this is a place that I would be happy to spend two, three hundred bucks a night, you know, as far as a... A very nice, clean-feeling vacation rental.